Did you hear Spring Boot 2 was released? You didn't? Well, it was. And I wrote this really long blog post on what's new in Spring Boot 2. But nobody's reading it. Kids these days, they want everything in video format. Well, so be it. In this video, I'm going to tell you all about what's new in Spring Boot 2. And we'll do it right after this. Welcome back everyone, my name is Dan Vega and on this channel you'll find all kinds of tips, tricks, and tutorials related to software development. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing and as always, anything we talk about will be listed in the description below. What are we waiting for? Let's jump on in. Alright, as I said, I have this article here called What's New in Spring Boot 2 and I'm not going to go ahead and read this to you word for word, I'm just going to use it as a little bit of a reference point. So first off in the article, I started out with some Spring Boot history. So if you're new to Spring Boot, this is a good way to kind of catch up on where we started, where we've gone to. And there's really just a, a kind of kickoff of where it was first announced and then all the different versions and what those versions kind of brought to us at a high level. So check that out. So let's just dive into what's new. So the biggest addition to Spring Boot 2 is the addition of Spring Framework 5. Now Spring Framework 5 came out in September of 2017, but most developers like me haven't been able to kind of take advantage of it yet because a lot of us kick off our new projects using something like Spring Boot. So this is really exciting because Spring Framework 5 gives us a whole bunch of awesome functionality. And we'll start with Java. So Java 8 uh, baseline is now required. That means you can't run it in Java 7. Uh, that also means that this gave the Spring team uh, a really great opportunity to rewrite a lot of the code base using Java 8, uh, which also gives us a lot of readability improvements and performance improvements and whatnot. Uh, it also means uh, we can go to Java 9 now. So in Spring Boot 1.x, you cannot create a new Java 9 project. In Spring Boot 2, you can. Uh, a few changes in Spring MVC. One of the bigger changes is the reactive stack in Spring Framework 5. So the reactive stack gives us a different way of thinking about how to build our applications. But the great thing is you don't have to learn a whole kind of new way to build things. Um, as you can see from this graphic here, we have our, our traditional servlet stack on the right where we have a servlet container, the servlet API, things like Spring Security, Spring MVC, and then we have Spring Data JPA to kind of hit our um, relational databases. Whereas the reactive stack gives us a non-blocking web framework from the ground up to take advantage of some really cool stuff. So you have things like Netty, Servlet 3.1, uh, reactive streams. Um, where this is built is, so we have Spring, Spring MVC on the right side, we have Spring Web Flux on the left side. So the ability to create these types of applications is really cool. Uh, Kotlin support out of the box. Uh, this was added in um, Spring. Uh, this was added a while back, but now there's actually dedicated support, and it's in the starter. So that's good to see. Uh, some testing improvements. Uh, so the biggest change here was support for Jane at Five's Jupyter programming. Uh, we'll talk about that as what it relates to in Spring Boot 2 in a second. That's kind of the roundup of Spring Framework 5. So what's new in Spring Boot 2? Uh, so we have some third-party library upgrade, upgrades, things like Timely 3, Jetty 9.4, Tomcat 8.5, Hibernate 5.2, Flyway 5, Gradle 4. Uh, we have some reactive Spring Data and Spring Security changes. Um, a big one is the actuator. So as we talked about before, there's there's this new Spring Web Flux. And this, the actuator in 1.x was written on against the servlet API. So the team had to go back and come up with something that would work uh, on both stacks, if you will. So they kind of rewrote the actuator from the ground up. Uh, it was redesigned for both servlet and reactive. Uh, status and health endpoints were separated out. There's a simplified security model now that makes things a lot easier. 
the move to micrometer, uh, improved JSON structures with things like origin support that allows you to really pinpoint where a particular property is located. And the biggest thing here is simplified process for creating user-defined endpoints. So if you've ever used the actuator and thought about creating your own endpoints for your business logic, that's gotten greatly simplified in uh, Spring Boot 2.0. Um, the Gradle plugin, some awesome changes there. Uh, go ahead and read through the documentation. What I really liked is there's a separate doc just for the Gradle plugin and the Maven plugin, and there's some really great information. I have links below in this article to all the documentation. Uh, this is a really good place to start. We talked about simplified security, um, H2, HTTP2 support. Uh, I wrote here <laughs> that it's hard to believe. The specification was written back in 1996 for 1.1. And I don't want to date myself here, but that was a long time ago and I remember that. So if you want to, you can go ahead and set a property, server.http2.enabled equal to true. Um, you'll just have to read through the documentation on how to get that set up. Uh, a few changes with configuration properties and kind of how relaxed, uh, relaxed binding works. Again, we talked about metrics. Uh, the Spring Boot's own metrics have been replaced by Micrometer. This is being developed in-house by Pivotal, and it's actually being quickly adopted across different projects at Pivotal, so that's good to see. So some more information about Micrometer there. Quartz Scheduler, Spring, two, Spring Boot 2 actually provides a Quartz Scheduler um, that uh, Spring Boot starter, so you can just Drop that uh, starter right in there and go ahead and run with that. Uh, Hakari CP is now the default connection pool over Tomcat. If you want to switch back to Tomcat, you easily can. Um, developer tools, there's actually a really cool um, addition here that's basically going to show us the evaluation delta and it's going to log it. So, when something changes and we kick off a restart, uh, you can actually get that logged to the console, like what changed to, to make this restart happen. Uh, so that's pretty cool. So as I said earlier, JNA5 is supported. Uh, out of the box though, if you create a new Spring Boot 2 application, you're gonna get JNA4. But i show you a quick little change here to make that happen. You just gotta exclude something from the Spring Boot starter test include the Jupyter dependencies and you're good to go using JUnit 5. So that's pretty cool. The really nice thing is they gave us a migration guide and this migration guide is really good for a couple of things. Uh, it just talks through some of the different pain points that you may run across to upgrading to Spring Boot 2, one of which is a property migrator. And so from, boot, from release to release, properties may change, but in uh, major releases like this, uh, there were a lot of changes. And so if you don't know which, what they were, you can always go look through the properties files, but this property migrator really helps you kind of get over that hump. Uh, so take a look at that. Again, I got some resources here. The documentation has been updated and I really like it. There's a whole actuator web API uh, endpoints document that I really like. Uh, there's a reference guide. Uh, again, Gradle and Maven reference guides. There's a common, common app application properties there. So if you want to see all the different properties within a Spring Boot pat, uh, app, you can check it out there. And that's really for documentation. Uh, books, there's two really good books on here um, that I, I have both of them. Uh, I've read one and a half of them. Um, the Learning Spring Boot 2 by Greg Link Turnquist is really good. Uh, it actually covers a lot of the reactive stuff, so I would check that out. Links are on both of these, so if you just click on here, you'll get the link to Amazon. Uh, courses, I'm working on a Spring Boot 2 course, so if you're interested in learning more about that, check this out. And that's about it. Conclusion, I would like you to jump over here or in the comments below and tell me about what features in Spring Boot 2 you're really excited about because I've been looking forward to this release for a while. This thing has been, I think, a year plus in the making. Um, just some really great additions and improvements to a product that I already really love to begin with. So excited about that. Spring Boot 2 is out. Start using it. I've got uh, a really fun course coming out where we're going to build an app from start to finish using Spring Boot 2, Java 9. Uh, we're gonna have some fun with it. Um, I don't wanna let too much out yet, but uh, it, 
recording these videos now and I'm having a lot of fun doing it. So can't wait to share that with you. And again, please let me know below uh, what you're excited about in Spring Boot 2 and I'll see if I can can't, can't get some more tutorials out about that. All right. Thanks for watching guys and have a great day.